हेलो एवरीवन आई होप यू लाइक द वीडियो फॉर इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ मार्पोल सेवेंटी थ्री सेवेंटी टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वील डिस्कस अबाउट द फर्स्ट एनएक्स ऑफ मार्पोल सेवेंटी थ्री सेवेंटी एट दैट इज एनएक्स वन रेगुलेशन फॉर द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ पॉल्यूशन बाय ऑयल दिस एनएक्स वन केम इन टू फोर्स ऑन सेकेंड ऑक्टोबर नाइनटीन एटी थ्री एंड द रिवाइज एडिशन ऑफ दिस एनएक्स फॉर सेंटर इन टू फोर्स ऑन फर्स्ट जैन टू थाउजेंड सेवन now we will see that why this oil pollution is the major concern in the marine environment actually uh, if you see 2 billion tons of crude oil is transported by the ships all around the world from which a single vlcc tanker can carry near about 1.9 million to 2.2 million barrels of crude oil where also a ulcc tanker can carry near about 4 million barrels of crude oil so while such a big operation in such a large scale mistakes may happen and accidents also may happen which causes marine pollution i had already discussed about case history of torre canyon and also about exxon voltage in my last video so these are the examples of uh, marine pollution but these were the examples of accidental causes but you know accidental causes are not only responsible for the uh, pollution of marine environment operational causes are too yes operational causes are also responsible for the uh, pollution of marine environment so let's discuss about these causes so what are those operational causes which are responsible for the pollution or for the oil pollutions so first is oil uh, discharge loading and discharging of oil cargo second is cleaning of cargo tanks here in this uh, point cleaning of cargo tanks i would like to add the word residues the word residues actually means and a uh, small amount of something is left when the major part of it has been used or has been gone see for example when crude oil is discharged from the tanks small amount of crude oil is left into the tank and while cleaning that crude oil is mixed with the dirty water and it is discharged into the sea and that actually causes oil pollution the next is bilge cleaning the cleaning of bilge discharge of dirty ballast so these are the few points related to operational causes there are many more in accidental causes we can see collisions and groundings i had discussed the case history of as i discussed the case history of torre canyon with you okay it is an example of grounding similarly exxon voltage also so we will see that uh, what are the steps taken uh, to to prevent oil pollution from these operational causes and accidental causes but before going to that points we will see what are the effects of oil pollution to the marine environment according to a report of world maritime university sweden of 2013 the effect of oil pollution depends on number of factors such as the physical feature of the affected region the weather conditions and seasons the nature and the efficiency of clean up and the biological and the economical characteristics too and also the category of oil let's see some effects a uh, major effects of oil pollution to the marine environment so the first point is effect to the sea and shore birds sea and shore birds like fulmars and razorbills they actually dive underwater for their food also their feathers uh, are getting coated with oils which may cause the loss of body heat and that may cause that also their food sources on in sea and also on shore are getting covered with oil second point is disturbance to the ecosystem of fishes and other marine life as we know that if any if a single thing is getting disturbed in a, in an ecosystem then the whole chain is getting disturbed so that why uh, this oil pollution disturbs the ecosystem of fishes and marine life third point is long term damage to the marine plants and animals for this point you can take the example of exxon voltage the, uh, the exxon voltage oil spill was really a major oil spill and you can see the effects of exxon voltage oil spills till decades next is toxicity so yes the crude oil is really toxic for the marine life it is also toxic for the human life too so next point is serious impact on human health as it can affect the inland water it can also affect the fresh water system also ingesting toxic seafood is harmful for the human health also it causes difficulties in breathing uh and also it causes coughing so these were few major points according to the report of world maritime university sweden of effects of oil pollution 
I will provide you the PDF of this report. You can download it by the link from the description for a better understand about the effects of oil pollution to the marine environment. So let's see what are the uh, steps adopted by IMO according to the Annex 1 for the prevention of pollution by oil. So first is about special areas. What are special areas? MARPOL defines certain sea areas as special areas in which for technical reason relating to their oceanographic and ecological conditions and to their sea traffic, the adoption of special mandatory methods for the prevention of the pollution is required. Under the convention, these special areas are provided with higher level protection than other areas of the sea. It means that some areas in the sea are defined as special areas according to their oceanographic and ecological conditions and also according to the sea traffic and some special mandatory methods are adopted for the prevention of pollution in these special areas. So let's see uh, what are the special areas for Annex 1. So the special areas as per Annex 1 are uh, Mediterranean Sea, Baltic Sea, Red Sea, Persian Gulf areas, Black Sea, Gulf of Aden, Antarctic area, Northwestern Europe waters, Oman, uh, Oman area of uh, Arabian Sea and Southern South African waters. Okay, so these are the special areas as per Annex 1. Now let's see what are the discharge criteria in these special areas and out of these special areas. But before going to the discharge criteria, we will see what is the oil filtering equipment. Now, according to the regulation 14 of Annex 1, every vessel above 400 gross tonnage shall have an oil filtering equipment approved by administration. Okay, Every vessel above 400 gross tonnage should have oil filtering equipment. It will ensure that any oily mixture discharged into sea after passing through equipment has an oil content not exceeding 15 ppm. Okay. And also the vessels which are more than 1000 gross tonnage should have alarm system it, and it will indicate when the level of oily mixture exceeds 15 ppm. Also there should be an arrangement to ensure uh, that if the oil content exceeds 15 ppm then the discharge should be automatically stopped. Now let's see according to the Annex 1 what are the discharge criteria in the special areas. So the first point is the ship proceeding is en route. Next is the oily mixture is uh, processed through an oil filtering system. Third is the oil content of the effluent without dilution does not exceed 15 ppm. Here I will like to add one more point that when the vessel is sailing in the special areas then there should be an alarm system it indicates when the level of oil content content increases 15 ppm and also there should be an arrangement to automatically stop the discharge. The next is oily mixture do, uh, do not originate from the cargo pump room bilges in case of oil tankers. Okay. Then the last is oily mixture in case of oil tankers is not mixed with oil cargo residues. I discussed about residues with me. So now let's see what are the discharge criteria outside the special areas. The first point is the ship proceeding and route. The oily mixture is processed through an oil filtering system. Next is the oil content of effluent without dilution does not exceed 15 ppm. Then oily mixtures do not originate from the cargo pump pump room bilges. Okay, and the oily mixture in case of oil tankers uh, is not mixed with oil cargo. So these are the discharge criteria outside the special areas. Now let's see what are the requirements for the cargo spaces of oil tankers outside special area. The first point is it should be more than 15 nautical miles from nearest land. Then it should be proceeding and route. The next is instantaneous rate of discharge of oil content does not exceed 30 liters per nautical mile. Okay. Then the operational ODMCS. Okay. That means oil discharge monitoring and control system and a slope tank arrangements should be there in the oil tankers. And the last point is the total quantity of oil discharged into the sea does not exceed 1 by 15,000 of the total quantity of the cargo for the ships delivered on or before 31st December 1979 and 1 by 
30,000 of the total quantity of cargo for the ships delivered after 31st December 1979. Now, what are the requirements for the cargo spaces of oil tankers in special areas? So, any discharge in the sea of oil or oily mixture from the cargo area of an oil tanker shall be prohibited while in special areas. Okay, the discharge of oil or oily mixtures from the cargo areas of, oil, of an oil tanker is prohibited. Now let's see what are the exceptions. The discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixture necessary for the purpose of securing the safety of a ship or saving life at sea. Second point is the discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixture resulting from damage to a ship or its equipment. Third point is provided that all reasonable precautions have been taken after the occurrence of the damage or discovery of the discharge for the purpose of preventing or minimizing the discharge. Fourth point is except if the owner or the master acted either with intent to cause damage or recklessly and with knowledge the damage could probably result. Fifth point is the discharge into the sea of substances containing oil approved by the administration when being used for the purpose of combating specific pollution incidents in the order to minimize the damage from pollution. Sorry. Any such discharge shall be subjected to the approval of any government in whose jurisdiction it is uh, contemplated the discharge will occur. Now let's talk about crude oil washing. Every crude oil tanker which is 20,000 dead weight and above must be fitted with crude oil washing system for every cargo hold tank. Okay, every crude oil tanker which is 20,000 dead weight and above must be fitted with crude oil washing system for every cargo hold tank. Now, what is this crude oil washing system? So, crude oil washing is washing out the residues. I had discussed about this word residues with you from the oil tanker using crude oil itself okay see what happens that uh, crude actually due to the sticky nature of crude oil crude oil sticks on the walls of the cargo hold tank after the cargo oil is discharged so to release that uh, oil from the cargo hold uh, walls of the cargo hold uh, crude oil is uh, uh, pumped into the slope tanks and after preheated they are sprayed on the walls by pressure nozzles so this is crude oil washing system now let's talk about oil record books. So the part one of oil record book is for machinery space operations. It is to be carried by oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above and all ships of 400 gross tonnage and above. Okay, the part one of oil record book, it is for machinery space operations and it is to be carried by oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above and all ships of 400 gross tonnage and above. Part two of oil record book, it is for cargo ballast operations, okay, cargo and ballast operations and it is to be carried by oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above, okay, part 2 is for cargo ballast operations and it is to be carried by oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above and uh, these oil record books should be kept in such places that they, are, should, they should be readily available for inspection at any reasonable times and this oil record books should be, uh, should be kept for three years after the last entry has been made. Now let's see what are the entries to be made in oil record book part one. So first is ballasting or cleaning of oil fuel tanks. Then discharge of dirty ballast or cleaning water from oil fuel tanks. Then collection and disposal of oily residues that may be sludge or etc. Then discharge overboard or disposal otherwise from engine room bilge water. Okay. And then bunkering of fuel or bulk lubricating oil. Okay, bunkering of fuel or bulk lubricating oil. Now, what are the entries to be made in the oil record book part two? So, first is loading of oil cargo, then internal transfer of oil cargo during voyage, then unloading of oil cargo, ballasting of cargo tanks, and dedicated clean ballast tanks. Okay, then cleaning of cargo tanks, including crude oil washing. Then discharge of water from slope tanks. The next is closing of oil applicable valves for similar devices after slope tank discharge operation. 
then closing of walls necessary for isolation of dedicated cbts from cargo and stripping lines after slope tank discharge operations and last is disposal of residues so these were the entries to be made in the oil record book part 1 and part 2 now let's talk about odmcs odmcs means oil discharge monitoring and control system and odme means oil discharge monitoring equipment every oil tanker of 150 gross tonnage and above shall be fitted with this odmcs now let's see what are the points related to odmcs an odmcs must have a recording device to provide continuous record of operation showing liters per nautical mile then total quantity of oil discharge the oil contained and the rate of discharge okay then it must identify date and time and then uh, should have should be uh, should come into operation when there is any discharge of effluents to see and should be capable to capable of stopping the operation of uh, if the instantaneous rate of discharge exceeds 30 liters per nautical mile then failure to the system shall stop the operation and in case of failure the system may be used on manual mode but the defect to be repaired as soon as possible now let's talk about shopper shopper means shipboard oil pollution emergency plan every oil tanker of 150 gross tonnage and above and all the ships of 400 gross tonnage and above shall carry this shop ape on board approved by the administration now let's see what are the points must be included in the shop ape so first is the procedure to report oil pollution incident then the list of authorities or persons to be contacted in the event of an oil pollution incident a detailed description of the ac action to be taken to de reduce or control the discharge of oil in following incident then procedure and point of contact on the ship for coordinating the shipboard actions with the national and local authorities in combating the pollutions now let's talk about iopcc iopcc means international oil pollution prevention certificate it is for oil tankers above 150 gross ton now let's talk about iopcc iopcc means international oil pollution prevention certificate it is for oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above and for all ships of 400 gross tonnage and above it is issued by administration and it is valid for 5 years supplement with supplemented with form a for vessels other than oil tankers and form b for oil tankers okay form a is for vessels other than oil tankers and form b is for oil tankers now we will see ship shore safety checklist for pollution prevention methods itemized on tanker ships so the points are vessel should be securely moved effective ship shore communication system established emergency signals to be used by ship and shore to be decided and understood cargo hoses are properly rigged and not damaged shop equipments stand by scupper plugs in place then high level alarms of the tanks to be operational firefighting equipments to be kept standby effective deck watch to be maintained to check any overflow so this was about the next one of marpol 7378 i will provide you a pdf you can download it from the link in the from the description box and you can go for the detailed study from that pdf i hope you will like the video so please click the like button share the video and subscribe the channel thank you so much